All right, make sure you smile at somebody next to you and uh, let them know that you're a Christian by your love. How's that sound? <laughs> you know, Pastor Brennan was talking about dog food. How many of you have dogs? How many have more than one dog? Two dogs. Three dogs. Can I get four dogs over here? Four dogs. How many's got? How many got five dogs? Please. Five. Any, somebody had four. Anybody have four dogs? Wow. Yeah, I have three German Shepherds. I love them too. And uh, they eat. In fact, my big shoe bear, my biggest one, the big old male German Shepherd. Man, that guy, he can eat and eat. And I'm like, dude. But so when Jonathan was back just a, a few days ago, Jonathan, I know you're watching. Because, you know, he, he lives in a different city, so he's watching. And, uh, John, you know this to be true, so I'm going to tell this. So I was down feeding the dogs. Like, hey, man, I'll come down and feed the dogs with this. So I pulled out the, the dried dog food and uh, scooped it in. He goes, hey, Dad, you ever tried that? I said, no, not in a million years. I don't even think about trying dog food. He's like, really? Hey, that stuff's pretty good, Dad. You ought to try it. I'm like, John, I know you're setting me up thinking that I'm stupid enough because you've never tried it, that you think somehow that I'm going to eat that dog food. John, you're an idiot. I'm not going to eat that dog food, nor am I going to be convinced that you have or you would. He's like, yeah, I would. Grabs and puts it in his mouth and eats it. Honest, he did. He did. Yeah, he did. And he started going around going, Arr! No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> No, he didn't. I just, if he did, I would have cast the devil out of him. <laughs> so, all right. <laughs> How many even noticed the heat? Anybody notice the heat? So you were here on uh, Wednesday, and those of you that are watching, we had a prophetic false conference call, which we'll be giving you the next day for the next one. But uh, I want to just remind you that this Wednesday coming up, we are going to have a time of worship, a short exhortation, some training and prayer. You know, listen, you learn to pray by hearing people pray. So that's what we're going to do Wednesday. We're going to pray for the nation, pray for the city. We're going to pray for different people. And uh, we're, going to, we're going to get some stuff done. And uh, this church was built on prayer, still is. And uh, so anyway, on the prophetic pulse, what we had last uh, Wednesday, we talked about some prophecies about heat. And if they would put the one up, uh, the slide there. Notice what God said back in March of this year. So God would declare from his majesty and might of his throne that the mountains, obstacles, resistance, governments, leaders of nations, and those who've lifted themselves to be high and lofty as the mountains will be brought down. Okay, so how many got what God just said? Now he's going to tell you a sign that that's going to happen. And they will melt like wax. God says, listen, they will conform as wax conforms. How? What's, what's the reason? Why will this take place? Why will the things he listed, why will this conforming like wax happen? Because God says extreme heat, record heat, early heat upon the earth, dangerous heat. If you type in any of those words right now, they are international national headlines. And he said, these will be but signs Early on record, breaking and shattering records. I just looked at Fort Worth. Pastor Gene, it's going to be a hot flashpoint. They're having 108 today, 106 tomorrow. It's just going on and on and on. And so the mountains, he said, why? Why is this happening? He said, break records, a wave, great wave of heat. Why? The mountains among the nations and concerning the nations shall begin to melt. So in other words, God's just talking about obstacles, governments. He's referring to it like mountains that seem like they can't be penetrated or touched or moved. So they're going to begin to melt because I'm turning up my heat that shall trigger things in the natural at my presence. And things that look strong, things that look unmovable, that they shall stand and be and remain the same as the mountains. Watch it begin to melt. So things are going to start happening in Canada. Watch them melt in you, United States. Watch them begin to melt between Ukraine and Russia that there shall be joining of hands in a treaty of peace, and this shall come among the earth. Listen now at my presence that's increasing. The earth will respond. The heat will arise. So God's telling all these things to look for. Here's another one. This one's from May 15th. And there shall be great heat in the earth. Record temperatures will continue to arise. I will do what? What is God saying? I'll do the opposite, though, when you see it in the natural. 
I will begin to cool things down. Here's the promise that I may bring what? A swift change and a relief to the harsh season. Because God says the elitists, so they call themselves, I laugh, that they think that this is about their reset. Nay, it is my reset, says the living God. We got some good stuff getting ready to happen. Amen. Not that I like the heat. You know, I, I like to uh, have my dogs. I play in the water with them. They love it. But anyway, hey, that's my son. What's he saying? Hey, John. All I got is one thing to say. All right, you're on international. Go ahead. What are you going to say, John, in your defense? Dog food is probably healthier than 99% of the junk that. <laughs> Say that again. I'm going to put it up to my microphone. What did you say about your eating of dog food? Dog food is probably healthier than 99% of the junk you can buy at the store. Well, in and a lot of it, that's in your cabinet. And a lot of it's in my cabinet? John, have you ever heard the sound of a phone that hangs up? Pretty soon. Well, here's what I want to say. Enjoy your dog food and rice. Bye. <laughs> that is really funny that he called. <laughs> Call me later. I have words for you. <laughs> I love you, Tiger. All right. I want you to open your Bibles to the book of Acts. I sure miss him. I hate that he lives in a different city, but he's training to be an MMA fighter, and so we, we, we believe he's a, he's a fighter, all right. All right, I want you to, uh, to look at Acts chapter 2, and uh, I can't even preach, John, thanks. All right, so I want you to look at Acts chapter 2, and I want to talk about the benefits of praying in tongues. Now, here's the thing. In every church, you have believers who pray in tongues, and they pray in tongues regularly. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit. You have some in every church who got filled with the Holy Spirit, but they're not praying in tongues hardly at all or at all. And then you have some that, you know, they're saved, but they're like, hey, man, what is this about praying in tongues? What does that mean? I've never heard that or I've heard about it. I don't know what to believe. Well, we're going to address that. Then there's some folks that come in and uh, the Bible calls them unbelievers and they haven't given their life to the Lord, but they're like, what's all this tongue stuff? Well, let's go through the scripture because I want to teach you the benefits of of praying in tongues. I want you to look at Acts chapter 2, and I want to give a challenge to everybody too. In Acts chapter 2, notice what it says in verse 1. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So there was 120 of them, including Jesus' mother. Mary was there. She was one of the 120. And suddenly there came a sound that came from heaven. And this sound came as a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them, so all 120, tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of the 120. Now watch this. Not one person of the 120 was left out at all. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they all began to speak in tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now, why do I say that? Because there's teachings that say that the Holy Spirit is given with the evidence of speaking in tongues to some, but not to everyone. Well, you don't find those examples in Scripture. There's other people that will say, well, I'm filled with the Spirit. Well, sure, there's a certain filling that comes when you get saved. That's John chapter 4, where Jesus was talking to the woman at the well, and he said, in you, woman, is a well that springs up unto everlasting life. And we know that the Holy Spirit comes and there's a regeneration of your spirit. Your spirit is born again when you accept Jesus. But then he goes on in John 7, three chapters later you could say, and he begins to declare that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And he's talking about the infilling of the Holy Spirit, the life of speaking in tongues is like a river that flows out of you. It's a separate experience than just getting saved. So here's the thing. They all began to speak in tongues and the initial proof that they were filled with the Holy Spirit was they began to speak in tongues. And as I was preparing for the Pentecost message last Sunday, I was specifically asking the Lord, I said, Lord, please 
show me what is on your heart. If you were to say anything to your church, no matter if they're filled with the Spirit, no matter if they've never heard it, no matter if maybe they were, but they're not praying, what would you say to your people? And all of a sudden, I was drawn to verse 4 by the Holy Spirit, and he began to talk to me about this verse, and I want you to see this. Notice again, verse 4 of Acts 2, and I want you to hear this, those of you that are watching. And they were all, underline all, circle it, highlight it. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they all began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to ask you a question. What would happen if you, a believer who's already filled with the Holy Spirit, would up the amount of time that you pray in tongues? What would you be like as a believer? What would be the state of God's church if tongue-talking Christians would up and increase the amount of their praying in tongues? What would happen if non-tongue-talking Christians would get filled with the Holy Spirit and begin to speak in tongues? What would happen to the state of the Lord's church? I'm not talking denomination. What would happen if everyone who's filled with the Holy Spirit and speaks in tongues would not only increase the amount of time, but they would every single day, I'm just saying, at the same time, pray in tongues? What would be the state of the church? What would be the state of the nation? What would be the state of the earth? What would be the state of our politics? What would be the state of our gas prices? What would be the state of the economy? I believe the reason why there's so much confusion, division, fighting, hopelessness, fear is because the tongue-talking level and prayer of the church is at an all-time low. You say, well, I don't believe that. Yeah, because if pastors, it's been recorded... That pastors, the amount of time they pray every week is less than eight minutes. The greatest sin, perhaps, among Christians is prayerlessness. And that's not even talking about tongues. That's just talking about prayer itself. Imagine what would happen if we all would begin to speak in other tongues what would happen in the church? The nation. What kind of changes would be brought to the earth? Now, this is important. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So I was uh, praying in my brown prayer chair. We, we actually got rid of the brown prayer chair years ago. I wish we would have kept it. But it kind of had, remember that, Brenda? It kind of had like this thing in the middle that kind of hurt. It was falling apart, but it was my brown prayer chair. And that prayer chair was very important because I had a lot of supernatural experiences with it. In fact, one day, I was, uh, we were trying to birth our ministry. We had just gotten married, and we got this little apartment, beautiful little apartment. And uh, we had this little brown chair in our, our prayer room uh, next door to uh, our living room and our, uh, our room. And I was praying there, and I was looking out the window, and I said, God, what do I need to do? to really get this ministry going. I don't understand. Why aren't doors opening up? And of course, you know, I was 23. Brenda was 22. And I heard the Lord say, just pray in tongues. And so I just kept praying in tongues, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. And then I heard in my spirit, you know, sing in tongues, because that's what the scripture says you can do. So I remember singing in the spirit, and I was looking out the window and just kind of imagining going uh, across the nation, preaching across the earth. And I turned around, and I... I did a double take, and I looked right next to my chair. And I looked again, and it didn't change what I saw. And I thought, okay, this is weird. And I literally saw an angel standing by my brown chair. And immediately, without thinking, I knelt down right in front of that brown chair. And I began to worship the Lord. And I closed my eyes thinking, Hank, you're just, this is just your head, man. And because and, 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 I'm not into sensationalism. I, and I was worshiping 
And I thought, I'm going to open my eye and see if I still see that thing. I opened my eye and I was shocked. That angel bowed right next to me and was worshiping with me. Yeah. Oh, God. So what did you do, Pastor Hank? I started praying in tongues. And as soon as I prayed in tongues, that angel shot up. I don't know how he got up so fast. He got up and shot out of my, my room. Just with so much force. I remember when he went out of the room, I fell backwards. And I thought, oh my Lord, I didn't make this up. This actually happened. And I just kept praying in tongues, praying in tongues. A few months later, we're way in the back of one of the uh, buildings here in Omaha at a meeting. It wasn't one of Benny Hinn's biggest meetings, but there were several thousand in the meeting. And Brenda and I, we had come in late because it was uh, a lot of traffic. And, and, and I'm way in the back, and all of a sudden, they're worshiping, and Pastor Benny, he stops. And he says, yes, Lord. You know how he talks. And he says, that couple in the back, you in the back, you come up here. I see the Lord on you. Come up, y'all. Come up, y'all. And I'm looking around. Yes, you that's looking around. You come up here. You come up here. You come up here. I'm like, okay. And so we realized it was Brenda and I. And he gets us on stage and begins to prophesy over our ministry about that we go all over the world. And he laid hands on us and blah, blah, blah. Bob, I think you got prayed over too that day. You remember that? And, and uh, it was interesting because that was right after that angel was in my prayer room and shot out. All of a sudden now, we get an impartation that forever changed our life and our ministry. So you don't realize what's happening when you pray in the Spirit, the things that are happening in the world. So let's get back to this prayer chair. So one day I was sitting in this prayer chair, and I want you to put up 1 Corinthians chapter 13 because I want to teach you something that the Lord showed me in this verse. Now, this is not taking this verse out of context. I'm teaching you a supernatural principle okay we know what this verse says though i speak with the tongue of men and of angels stop right there notice if you speak in tongues of men men are in the earth men as those of you that are watching are in the natural realm angels are where in the spirit so he's saying even though i speak with tongues in the natural or even tongues that are in the spirit I don't have love, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So I'm sitting in my chair, and the Lord doesn't quote the last part of that verse. He quotes this verse to me. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels. And he stopped. And I said, Lord, what are you saying? Are you saying I'm not walking in love like the rest of the verse says? He didn't answer me. So I pressed him again, and I said, Lord, are you saying that I'm not walking in love? And he said to me, what I want you to understand, when you pray in tongues, you move men, you move things in the earth realm. You move things in the natural. What would happen if all of us who know that our vote and our voice got stolen in the 2020 election, if we began to pray in tongues about it. Could it move men out of where they are and should not be? And then he said, not only do you move men, but you move angels. You move things in the spirit realm. That's what happened when I was in that brown chair and I was worshiping and I got over in tongues. That angel shut out. And not only did it move something in the spirit by the way that angel moved, but it literally moved something in the natural to where now, a few months later, I'm getting called out and imparted to supernaturally. What would happen if you and I would increase the amount of our praying in tongues? What is standing in your way in the natural? What seems like it's not changing in the natural? What needs activation and movement in the spirit? Let me show you how important this is. In um, uh, Daniel chapter, I believe it's Daniel 9. 
And I believe it's verse 22. I could be completely wrong, but I know it's in the book of Daniel. The Bible says that Daniel, I, Daniel, when I prayed, the angel moved swiftly. That's what it says in the book of Daniel. Daniel prays, and it says the angel. Yes, while I was praying in prayer, even the man Gabriel, who I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me. So notice it was when he was praying. What would happen when you pray in the Holy Ghost? If it's the tongue of men and of angels, tongues that affect things in the natural, tongues that affect things in the spirit, with angels, what would happen if you increase the amount of praying in tongues, Daniel said, while I was speaking in prayer, even Gabriel, one of the highest ranking angels, came and began to fly. What? Swiftly. Why are some things not happening? Because sometimes we are so busy praying things out. In English, if that's our native language, Spanish, Russian, whatever it is that is your dialect. And what happens oftentimes is we pray something and we think, well, maybe it didn't catch. Maybe it didn't hit the target. Maybe I didn't pray it right. Maybe God didn't hear me. And so we re-pray it again and again and again. And we ain't moving nothing because God's moved by faith. And so we wonder why there's delay. What if we said, you know what, God? I'm going, I'm going to pray about this right here. And I'm going to get over in tongues. And I believe that I will move men. And I'm going to move angels. And I believe just like Daniel, who activated Gabriel to fly swiftly or to activate acceleration, is going to be the result over this nation. Is going to be the result over my life. Come on. Well, when's my spouse going to come? Well, rather than keep saying that, get over there, Lord. I thank you. My, my husband's come. And he's not swanky. He's not some guy that's going to come up in the church and going to creep me out and everybody else. 